Welcome to the 2015 Journal of Experimental Biology Symposium, held in March in Massa Marittima, Italy, where 19 speakers discussed the topic of muscle from molecules to motion. Each speaker will write a review article inspired by their talk and discussions that will be published in a special issue of the journal dedicated to muscle in early 2016. Hans Hoppeler, welcome to the Journal of Experimental Biology Symposium on Muscle Physiology. Um, you're the editor-in-chief of the JEB, and you've been responsible for organising this meeting. Um, why have you chosen the subject of muscle physiology for this year's meeting? Well, one, one of the main reasons was that uh, I've been personally very interested in muscle physiology through all of my academic career. Uh, but also I realized that the last 10 years have brought enormous advances in various areas that are important to understand locomotion. Well, our approach in organizing this meeting was that we wanted to span that uh, big gap between molecules and whole animal function. And so they, when we were selecting speakers, that was always uh, primary consideration of ours. How do we span that big gap? Okay. So what I wanted to do with the very first talk was to do just that, to say we can take isolated experiments and ask what's the big message that these isolated experiments tell us when we integrate them, when we put them together, when we put them in a... The topics that I covered in my talk really dealt with this long-standing problem of eccentric contraction in muscle. So we started, oh, about 15 years ago working on um, trying to incorporate Titan into muscle models, and I discussed three different um, uh, variations of models that include a role for Titan in active muscle that help us to understand the, the basis of this phenomenon. I was talking uh, primarily about the different types of myosin that are found in different muscle types. There are a whole range of different muscle types, fast, slow, um, different types of energetics, but they all express different types of the protein myosin, the major contractile protein, and looking at uh, how these myosins differ in their properties uh, to produce the different types of contraction you see in each of the different types of muscles. Fish have a white muscle, which is the bulk of their body, and they use this white muscle almost as a closed system where uh, glycogen is stored within the muscle. They use it to produce ATP and use that energy extremely quickly for sprinting, and then they can actually replenish uh, this glycogen from the lactate that has been produced during exercise within the muscle. Uh, mammals will have to use their liver for that. They have to transfer their lactate to the liver to reconvert it to glucose and then bring it back to their muscle. What I covered in my talk is really about the understanding of how muscle assembles during development and even more how it goes wrong in disease. So we're interested in the filament systems and how do they assemble to the perfection of single molecules. We look for rulers, we look for templates, and basically we're looking for how it's regulated. And, and I focus on actin filament regulation. Yes, the talk I gave was on the interaction between exercise and nutrients and really how exercise training could be modified by nutrient availability. So I talked about the availability of fat and carbohydrate and protein and how this could modify some of the biological processes that ultimately end up in the training adaptation. Um, my talk will be basically on uh, remodeling of skeletal, human skeletal muscle, uh, emphasizing the importance of uh, muscle structure for function. Mm -hmm. Using new imaging tools such as ultrasound, uh, one can differentiate between the growth of muscle either um, in the various uh, planes. So um, by, we can using, by using this technology, we can understand how sarcomeres basically are, are added in parallel and in series and what are the functional consequences of this. I think uh, this sort of meeting is just so nice to spend two or three days with people with a broad range of dis different interests and just to learn about different ways of looking at the same, the same problem from, from quite different perspectives. 
it's such an exciting time for muscle, you know, and I think that's been really apparent in the talks because 15 years ago, everyone thought, oh, we're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's, and this is a field that's been solved. But talk after talk has brought out so much of what we still don't know about muscle, so we, we, we have a new understanding of how much we really have yet to discover. The amazing part of this meeting is having the broad breadth of all the investigators here who look at all different aspects of muscle physiology and be able to sit here and try to, to put it all into one big picture. Yeah, the other talks have been really interesting. They've sort of taken me out of my comfort zone. And when you hear about fish physiology or, or various other things that we've heard in the meeting, it makes you try and think of how these questions could be addressed into your relevant field. So I've really enjoyed actually sitting in on some of the talks on hibernation, on animal physiology, uh, and you really then see the extremes of physiology and sometimes how, how pathetic the human system actually is. 